Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to day 28 of the 31 Days of Horror. DBougie86 here again. That is right, peeps. And today I have a film that I remember watching at a very young age, and I was like, maybe I shouldn't be watching this right now. Uh, I'll get into a little bit more of that in a minute, but uh, <laughs> yeah, this is a adaptation of a classic story directed by an Academy Award winning director, and that is Bram Stoker's Dracula on 4K. Oh yeah, get in there with those 4Ks, yo. Uh, of course, this is directed by Francis Ford Coppola, uh, written by uh, Jim Hart from uh, his adaptation of the novel by Bram Stoker. Uh, yeah, uh, you know the story of Dracula, so I don't really need to really tell you guys or listeners the plot of Dracula at all, but this is probably one of the more faithful adaptations of the actual story. Uh, you know, it stars Gary Oldman as Dracula, Winona Ryder as Mina Harker, Anna in flashbacks, his old love, uh, Anthony Hawkins as Van Helsing, uh, Keanu Reeves as Jonathan Harker, which I'll get into in a minute, you know, uh, but one of the most, uh, you know, got Richard E. Grant as Dr. Sword, uh, Carrie Elways is in this movie, Billy Campbell, uh, and probably the most underrated performance of this movie that no one really talks about is Tom Waits as Renfield. Uh, I'll get into my thoughts on him in a minute. But, uh, Dracula, uh, when I first seen this, I'm like, wow, boobies. <laughs> uh, this movie is sexy as all hell. It has... It upped its sex levels to a ton. You know, vampirism usually has, like, its sexy time. They legitly uh, make everyone very over-sexualized in this movie. Especially Winona Ryder's character, who goes from making out with Jonathan Hawker to making out with her best friend Lucy to making out with Dracula himself. Even fucking making out with Van Helsen in this movie. That is right. Uh, she is very, very confused <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> but uh, I like it. I like it. And, you know, you got this, you know, you got like Monica Bellucci as one of Dracula's uh, three brides who uh, actually, uh, they kind of rape Keanu Reeves in this movie and I think one of them bites him in the dick. That is the insinuation of that scene. But, uh, yeah, I love this movie with passion. You know, I love the gothic set pieces. I love that they used all practicals for the effects. Because this came out during a time when you could have used CGI for most of uh, the effects in this movie. And I'm glad they didn't. The prosthetics and the makeup that they use on Dracula through his multiple transformations uh, are amazing in the film. In general, especially Werewolf Dracula when he's legitimately like raping Lucy on this like stone pillar. And, you know, Mina sees all this and she's like, what? I want some of that. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought when I was watching it this time. But, uh... <laughs> uh... Yeah, the cast is pretty good. I know a lot of people complain about Keanu Reeves and even Winona Ryder with their uh, British accents, per se. Uh, I grew to actually not mind them. You know, it's like the, you know, I, that time period when Keanu Reeves was still known as uh, Ted from Bill and Ted, you know, it was like, it's like, hey, man. Ruffles, you know, you know, he was definitely like a big name at the time. I understand why he was in the movie and it doesn't really bother me that much. You know, it, you know, I just kind of laugh at it. Like it was the same man, you know, 
But uh, Tom Waits as Renfield. Let's get into this. Uh, he's so good. Like especially that scene where he's like, "The master will come for me." You know, it's fucking great. And I just love his look. Like this weird, curly, like David Lynch hair, uh, straight jacket and all, and these little like spec glasses and. Uh, it's a very interesting portrayal. Renfield's kind of like that interesting character inside the novel and even mostly all the adaptations of this story. He's kind of the one that I kind of dwell on because, you know, he's the guy who's like, helps Dracula get what he wants in different situations. He's mostly in the sanitarium in this version of the movie, but I still like that performance. It's kind of strives because he wants more and you know and he pays for what he does because he actually warns Mina at some points to stay away and that's what ends his demise in the film uh beautiful soundtrack to this movie too I love it it's very haunting I love the set pieces it's very period piece set and so if you're not in the period pieces I'm sorry Dracula is a period piece tale especially the way that's told, it could be probably told in modern times. I'm not gonna lie, but overall, I like it's gothic. It's gothic is all fuck, and I love that shit about it. It has some great atmosphere to the film, and uh, tons of great fucking blood effects. Like uh, when Lucy becomes full vampire, uh, there's this scene where she just throws up fucking blood all over fucking Van Helsing, and it's still iconic. Uh, you know, uh. It kind of gets a little soured, unfortunately, because there was a movie directed by Mel Brooks that kind of played on this fucking uh, joke, too, at the same time. You know, like, she vomited, like, 15 times in that movie. But, <laughs> you know, either way, it, it's still great, in my opinion. You know, like, some of the visual effects, like, they're done all practically and it's fucking nuts like there's some puppetry in this movie that in the flashback scenes that are and i kind of like that they kind of mixed uh the dracula mythos with like you know he was like this warrior like val the impaler who, who was originally the basis for dracula and i kind of like that whole like open and cold open of the film too it was actually very interesting in that aspect that they tried to mix history with uh fiction per se and yeah it's just a cool movie and uh i think if you are a fan of like the dracula story and you haven't seen this version this is probably one of the best adaptations of the actual source material uh i actually also do like jess franco's dracula which is kind of a very uh faithful mostly faithful adaptation of the source material with christopher lee in it which was awesome that he got to do that because that's one thing that he wanted to do with his version of Dracula was to make a faithful adaptation of the story. But overall, uh, I highly recommend this movie. I love it. I even love the song by uh, uh, Annie Lennox that plays at the end. It's fucking awesome. Uh, if you haven't seen Bram Stoker's Dracula by Mr. Francis Ford Coppola, why, why are you here? Go watch it now. Watch it on a 4K. Even watch it on Blu-ray. The new Blu-ray. Which I also have a copy of. Looks fucking great too. So yeah. This film has some great additions out there. Which has visual stunning cinematography. It, it looks fucking. I even remember this movie looking great on VHS. For all I remembered. You know. It's fucking great. If you haven't seen it. Check it out. Alright guys. That's it for uh, day 28. We're counting down the days, and I'm glad that I got to do this series. It's been so fun. And, yeah, if you're wondering, I'm actually, you know, uh, just woke up. <laughs> so uh, that's why I'm kind of like, whoa, you know. But uh, overall, I'm still having a blast, and I hope you enjoyed this video like much as I did. So I'll see you then. Bye-bye.